Some movies stumble at the finish line and screw up a few hours of audience goodwill via a few minutes of ill-advised twists. Looking at you, Hills Have Eyes director Alexandre Arger's Switchblade romance. Sometimes it's a misjudged over-the-top ending, or a depressingly flat and anticlimactic one, but oftentimes, particularly in horror films, the culprit of this last-minute disaster is a too ambitious reveal. Intended to leave the audience reeling, these endings instead leave viewers howling with laughter at their silliness. But what about the nothing special two-star efforts which elevate themselves through some classic endings? It's a phenomenon which is rarely highlighted, so here's a list of the horror flicks which weren't much cop until their killer fight final moments and great last minute twists. Some rely on cerebral surprises, some lean into their silliness to great result, and some simply shocked viewers by being meaner than the preceding film. But in every case, here are 10 times that otherwise passable horror flicks really nailed their landing. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with 10 incredible endings to otherwise terrible horror movies. Number 10. The Forest Released in 2016, The Forest was by and large a forgettable horror effort from director Jason Zarda. Set in the infamous Aokigahara Forest in Japan, the titular woods which is well known worldwide as a popular suicide destination, the flick follows a young woman who pursues her troubled twin sister into the forest whilst processing her childhood trauma around the tragic death of the pair's parents. This largely disappointing chiller is helped out by a great dual role for Game of Thrones starlet Natalie Dormer, and this device also facilitates its surprisingly devastating twist. Before we go any further, here is a spoiler warning, you have been warned. At the last second, the viewer learns that the supposedly disturbed sister has safely left the forest unharmed, whilst her seemingly stable twin, aka our heroine, is dragged down by spirits and succumbs to a brutal fate. Didn't think you had it in you, the forest. Number 9. The Village Let's face it, whether it's the ingenious ending of 1999's The Sixth Sense, the clever mid-film reveal nestled in 2000's dark drama Unbreakable, or the demented twist in 2008's eco-horror slash unintentional comedy The Happening, the village helmer M. Night Shyamalan is no stranger to the venerable institution of the twist ending. Sure, some of his reveals are corny and regrettable, but the last second twist in 2004's otherwise forgettable chiller The Village elevates the shoddy horror into so bad it's great territory. Seemingly a period piece wherein a small 1800s American town is encircled by clawed monsters which keep the locals inside its limits, the twist reveals when our heroine escapes that, surprise, it's actually set in contemporary America, and the clawed monsters are just monster-suited local elders discouraging the youths from entering the big bad world of motor cars and Coca-Cola. Never change, M. Night. Number 8. Orphan. Another case of a horror which dove headfirst into hyper-campy, over-the-top territory to its benefit, Orphan is a rare evil child flick which manages to make the already slightly silly premise of a killer kid into something even sillier, and thus more fun. For its first hour or so, this hokey 2009 horror is a slow burn mystery, wherein a recently adopted kid exhibits all sorts of unsettling behaviours. The possible horror movie causes, possession, demonic parentage, seem too silly for such a self-serious film, leaving viewers uncertain and unsettled by this potentially exploitative and tasteless story. Which is why the film is really only remembered for its twist. But what a twist it is! As the audience learns the reason this child acts so far beyond her years is because she's secretly a 30-something serial killer posing as a kid. Number 7. The Ward with a stellar cast, including rising stars such as kick-ass love interest Lindsay Fonseca and Friday the 13th heroine Danielle Panabaker, Halloween director horror legend John Carpenter's 2010 return to the genre was a pretty crushing disappointment for fans of the Assault on Precinct 13 director. Set entirely in the eponymous psychiatric ward, the film followed a group of girls besieged by some sort of demonic presence which picked them off one by one. A bland, by-the-numbers slasher, the film had little appeal outside of its pretty period detail and killer twist. In the film's closing minutes, the viewer discovers all but one of the girls are imaginary, with each representing another part of the troubled heroine's personality, and they're dying off one by one as she progresses with her treatment and her mental state improves. Number 6. Sleepaway Camp 
Come on now, if you're a self-respecting horror fan, surely you knew 1983's infamous slasher hit Sleepaway Camp would put in an appearance on a list of otherwise passable movies best known for their superb endings. After all, would anyone remember this subpar summer camp slasher without the reveal of Angela's true nature? After teasing the possibility that her lone friend is the killer, this flick features a double whammy twist as the viewer learns that stoic loner Angela is, in fact, the murderer behind the film's kills. And she's also Peter, the disturbed young man who has traumatically been forced to identify as Angela by his demented aunt, a reveal made explicit by a shocking full frontal moment which remains as gasp-inducing as ever decades later. Number 5. The Skeleton Key 2005's Kate Hudson vehicle The Skeleton Key is by no means a great movie, and the only alright horror is another unfortunate case of Hollywood using voodoo religious rituals for window dressing rather than really spending any time depicting and discussing the rights practices and thought behind them. <coughs> the original 1988 Child's Play? <coughs> That said, the nasty twist thrown in at the tail end of this otherwise bland Bayou-set voodoo thriller improves proceedings immeasurably, as our heroine seems set to save the day, only to end up in a nightmarish hell of her own unintentional making. Hudson's well-meaning social worker may uncover the plot to transplant a dying patient's conscience in a younger body, but it doesn't mean she can stop this nasty fate from befalling her in the film's shockingly dark final twist. Number 4. Dead End for much of its runtime, the 2003 indie Dead End is the story of a lost family arguing. And that's basically it. Yes, some of the bickering is mildly diverting, there are a few moments of sub-David Lynchian late night in middle America weirdness, and there are a handful of tense set pieces thrown in here and there, but by and large, the film follows a small brood including genre stalwarts Ray Wise and Lynn Shay talking their way through a never-ending road trip, and it's the wrong sort of unwatchable as far as horrors go. Then the ending changes everything. The film's closing moments reveal that the entire cast died near the opening scenes and are wandering through some sort of purgatory, neither alive or dead, and they don't even know it. It's a devastating and terrifying twist, which more than salvages this initially slow and unimpressive genre effort. Number 3. April Fool's Day Okay, so 1986's April Fool's Day is beloved and infamous amongst horror fans in equal measure, but let's face it, this slasher is nothing special until its audacious reveal. Yes, you may have been able to guess the twist from the title alone, but this flick, which sees a set of standard slasher movie teens visit a remote island on the eponymous holiday, only to end up offed one by one by an unseen killer, does actually manage to convince audiences that it can't be that obvious. And it's a pretty standard, not at all memorable slasher as far as 80s horrors go. Until we discover that yes, the entire action of the film has been one absurdly elaborate prank, an unforgettably solid silly ending which earns this otherwise standard horror a place in the slasher film pantheon. Number 2. Rika Often lumped in with the splat pack efforts from the same era such as Cabin Fever director Eli Roth's Hostel and Piranha 3D helmer Alexandre Arger's Hills Have Eyes remake, director David Payne's passable but thinly plotted 2005 desert set horror Rika is less intensely gory than most of its contemporaries, but it's largely a pretty predictable slice of teen-aimed suspense nonetheless. Following a group of ravers on the way to a party whose car breaks down in the desert, the flick sees them plagued by the eponymous monster a ghoul whose presence is indicated by, well, a nasty smell. It's all pretty average as far as 2000s horror goes, until the barnstorming last moment reveal that our cast are all actually dead since the first reel, and the titular monster is simply an externalisation of their inability to pass on into the next life. Trippy. Number 1. Curse of Chucky a predictable and slow sequel for much of its runtime, 2013's Curse of Chucky took the increasingly ludicrous tone of the Child's Play franchise and threw out Seed of Chucky's zany comedy in favour of a more stripped-back slasher style. As such, this Child's Play installment is mostly a yawn-inducing piece of family drama, wherein unlikable characters are very slowly introduced and very slowly killed off as a helpless protagonist attempts to convince everyone involved that a toy is responsible. Then the until now flat flick kicks things up a notch with not one, but two killer endings, one pre-credits and one post, wherein first Chucky kills off everyone and escapes to wreak further havoc, then mails himself to the original film's Andy only to end up blown to bits by a shotgun. Two endings, one bleak and one happy, for the price of one. 
And that concludes our list. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell so you never miss a What Culture Horror video ever again. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.